It's quite cold. Let's warm up and get some energy. In my last video, I shared with you my reason for getting the new Apple MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Max. So, today I will show you some applications that I use on a daily basis and give you my thoughts on them. So, let's get rolling. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe, and I've been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years. And before we start, I would like to thank everyone who subscribed to my channel so far. You guys really rock. And to everyone else, check this video out. And if you like it, please consider subscribing to my channel. The first application is not a typical developer application. We will come to them right after this one. But it's still something that I highly recommend that you should consider using. It does not have to be exactly this application, but something like it. And I'm talking about a password manager. I use one password for that. This application is not free as far as I know, but I like it anyways. It enables me to store passwords securely in a password manager and share passwords with other people if they need access to them. For example, you can have credentials for some technical users and share them with other people on your team without the need to send them via email or stuff like that. I use it, for example, to share credentials to some accounting services with my assistant who helps me with the accounting stuff for my company. Also, it can generate random passwords for you. And since you don't have to remember them anymore, you'll finally stop using the same password for everything. Now we get to the more nerdy side of things. Now we start with the development focused applications. And since I said in my last video that a proper shell is important for me, let's have a look at my terminal. I always use iTerm2 as a terminal when I'm on macOS. And it is nice and it has the ability to split windows into several panes. You can then navigate between the split panes with the mouse or with keyboard shortcuts using command option and the arrow keys. And you can also toggle between a maximized view of the current active pane with the shortcut shift, command and enter. Those things are super handy. As you might have noticed, my shell looks quite fancy. That is because I use ZSH instead of the pre-installed bash and further tweaked it by installing something called Omai oh Z Shell. This enables you to extend your ZSH with a variety of useful plugins and themes. The theme that I'm using is called Power Level 10K, and I like it a lot. It's just amazing. I also like to install an additional plugin called Auto Suggestions that gives you some sort of an auto completion while typing. Function wise, Z Shell is quite similar to Bash but it is more user-friendly in my opinion. I mean, if there is such a thing with command lines. And I really like the plugins it offers. Then there are some command line programs that also help to make your life a bit easier. First of all, Homebrew. Homebrew is a package manager and a super comfortable way to install and update software. If you need to install something on your machine, like for example, iTerm2, there is a good chance that it is available in Homebrew and that you can install it by just typing one simple command. There is really not much more to say about it. It is super convenient and you should use it. Another neat command line tool not many people seem to know about, at least many of my colleagues didn't, is SDK Man. Using this tool, you can install and manage different versions of the SDKs it supports. I'm usually using it to install different versions of Java, Maven, Scala and SBT, but it supports many more SDKs, so I highly recommend that you check it out. Now you are able to install a new version of Java with just one simple command. To install a new version of an SDK is as easy as typing SDK install Java, which will then install the latest version of Java, but you can also specify a specific version to be installed. 
The documentation on SDK Man's homepage is excellent, so head over there and check out the possibilities. Now, let's talk IDEs. But before that, if you made it this far into this video, please go completely nuts on the subscribe button and all the notification icons you can find. That would really be appreciated. And thanks a lot. Back in the days when I started software development, like a century ago or so, I used to use Eclipse as my main IDE. It was nice and extendable, but also kind of slow. But at some point, the new thing came out and that was a company called JetBrains with their IntelliJ IDEA IDE. I tried it out and never looked back. And that was probably around 2011, 2012 or so. So I'm basically paying JetBrains for about 10 years now and I don't regret it in the slightest. It is a super nice and hassle-free experience and this is important for me. There are IDEs available for the most common programming languages and the feature set is just insane. The uh, JetBrains IDEs that I use the most are IntelliJ IDEA for Java and Scala and PyCharm obviously for Python. They also released recently an IDE, especially for data science, but uh, to be completely honest, I didn't have the time to check it out so far. There are many super neat features in the JetBrain IDEs. Some of my highlights are the extendability with many very good plugins and themes. By the way, I really love the Monokai Pro theme. Multi-cursor support, quite helpful when editing test data, for example. Search everywhere functionality, so when you don't know where or what to search, chances are that you will still find this really good support for Git. I do almost all my interaction with Git and GitHub from within the IDE and many more. But the thing that sells it the most for me is the crazy good IntelliSense. The IDE is unbelievably smart and always provides hints for optimizing your code and the auto-completion is also super smart. It's hard to describe, but during daily use, that is the one feature that makes the most difference. Also, there is the possibility to connect PyCharm with your Jupyter server. So you don't need to use the crappy web-based editor anymore, but can also experience the nice features of an IDE while developing with your Jupyter environment. There are community and paid ultimate versions available. To be completely honest, since I use the paid ultimate version for so long, I don't know what the community additions are lacking in terms of feature set, but in my opinion, it is highly recommended to check out those IDEs. Since the products from JetBrains are mostly fully fledged IDEs and intended to be used in bigger projects, they are also structured in projects and modules and so on to make life easier there, which does not always fit for me. Sometimes I need to quickly come up with a fire and forget script or stuff like that. And for that, I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio Code. This is more an editor than an IDE, but can be extended with plugins to also become somewhat of an IDE. There are a few plugins that I usually install when installing Visual Studio Code. To make it visually more appealing, I tend to install the Horizon theme and the Material Icon Pack. It then looks something like this. And then I like to install plugins for Docker and Python. Those provide some comfort in working with those technologies. Also, since I'm so stoked about the IntelliSense of the JetBrains IDEs, I installed the Visual Studio IntelliCode plugin. It uses AI to also provide a better development experience, but at least for me, nothing beats the IntelliSense of the JetBrains stuff. And I start to kind of getting the feeling that I sound like a total fanboy, but this stuff is just good. Another integral part of my daily work is, and who has seen that coming, Docker. I already made several videos about Docker, why it's great and how to use it. But I for sure could not leave it out of my top list of tools that I use. But to just say a few words about it before you go and watch the other videos, Docker is a great way to package applications and services and all of their dependencies to, for example, run them in a cloud environment like AWS or GCP. Also, it makes it super easy to run things like Spark, Kafka, and so on on your system without the need to install them. So definitely check out Docker and its capabilities. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me. If you liked the video, it would be great if you could maybe 
Go completely crazy on those subscribe button and notification icons. This way you tell YouTube that you like my content and help me get my stuff out to some more people. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video.